All right, here's the three six warm up. So three six, we talked about parallel and perpendicular lines, or sorry, parallel and coinciding and intersecting lines, figuring out the relationship between those, how to find the slope intercept form of an equation and how to find the point slope. So this person says write the equation of each line in a given form and then graph the line. The line through negative one, three, and three negative five in slope intercept form. So the first thing would be what slope intercept Good, y equals mx plus b. So for this equation, I need the m and I need the b. Do I have either of those? No, how do I find m? Y minus y1. Good, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I can make this one my ones and this one my twos. And again, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So then negative five minus three over three minus a negative one becomes plus one, negative eight over four, which is negative two. That's your slope. And then remember you have two choices. I can either take that slope and one of those points, plug it into slope intercept to find the B and then plug the M and the B back in. How many of you did it that way? Okay, the second way is point and slope, which is probably what I would recommend. You have a point and slope, so it's easier to plug it into that one and then just solve for y at the end. So if I do that, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The y stays the y. The y1, so I'm going to grab this point, minus 3 equals the m, which we just found was negative 2 x stays as x, and the x1 was that negative 1 minus negative 1 becomes plus 1. And I get y minus 3 equals negative 2, x minus 2, and then I want to add the 3 at the end. So if it had asked for it in slope, I mean in point slope form, then my answer would have been this one, but because it said slope intercept, this is what you want to give as your answer. Y equals negative 2x plus 1. Raise your hand if you got that part right. Any questions if you're not raising your hand? Hmm? 2x, negative 2x plus 1. And then it said to graph it. So I start at the B, which is positive 1, and then my slope is negative 2. Go down 2 and to the right 1. Do it one more time so I can get my nice straight line. And that's what it should look like. You could have also plotted those two points that they gave you, negative 1, 3, and 3, negative 5, and it still would have given you the same line. Just different points. On the graph? Sure. All right, two same set of instructions, but this time they give you a point and the slope. And it wants it in point slope form. So this is super easy to just plug it right in to y minus y1 equals m <laughs> times x minus x1. This would be my x1, this would be my y1, and this would be my m. So I get y minus a negative 1 becomes plus 1 equals 2 fifths x minus 5. And then you don't even have to distribute it. That's enough information. That's the format it wants it in. So that's my answer. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, good. All right, and then to graph. So I'm given the point and the slope. Those are what I'm going to use. I start at the point, which is 5, negative 1. I go to the right 5 and down 1. And then my slope is 2 fifths, which means up 2 and to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can keep going off your graph, or you can even reverse it and go down two and to the left five. You'd still get the same graph. Mm -hmm. I have to do to use this. I have to distribute this, right? So I'd have to do y plus one equals two fifths x minus, this would cancel, so I'd get 10 fifths y plus one equals two fifths x. Simplify that, that's a minus two. And then subtract the 1, and I get y equals 2 fifths x minus 3. Why go through all that work if I can get the information from here? You can do that. Go for it. You just don't have to. Okay.
My advice is go with the simplest part, which would be the information from the, because it's the same thing, right? Negative three is here, up two and to the right, five, I end up on that same line. It's just extra work you don't need to do. How come it's positive five instead of negative five? Then the point itself, yeah. that's what they gave me. So five negative one is the point. When I plug it into the equation, it changes the sign because the equation is a minus. So if I did minus a positive five, it so becomes minus five. Yep. All right, three and four just say determine whether the lines are parallel, intersecting, or coinciding. So remember, parallel is gonna have the same slope, but a different y-intersect. Intersecting is gonna have a different slope, and coinciding is gonna have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So when you look at these, you're going to take this, get it in a slope intercept format. So I would add the 3 to the other side. And I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. That's the first one. And then take this one. Either pull the point and the slope out of there or do the same thing we just did, which is solve for y. <coughs> y minus 5 would equal 2x plus 6, and then add the 5, and I get y equals 2x plus 11. So now I'm comparing these two equations. So the first thing you want to see is, are their slopes the same? No. They're not, which immediately says they are not parallel and they are not coinciding. Aren't they opposite or similar? They could be perpendicular, right? But that's not even one of those options. If it's not the same slope, they have to intersect because that's not parallel and that's not coinciding. The only other option is intersecting. Okay, but like also if they're parallel, wouldn't that mean they're intersecting already? No, parallel never intersects. I mean, um, perpendicular. If they're perpendicular lines, then as long as they're coplanar, which all these are going to be coplanar, then they are intersecting. Yep. So these are perpendicular, which was in 3, 5. Like if they are opposite reciprocals, then they're, in, then they're perpendicular. And if they're perpendicular, they're intersecting. So that's your answer here. Do you need to know that for the test? Yep. What does intersecting mean again? It means they cross. At some point, they hit each other. Coincide means Coinciding ends up being the same line. So if I had y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 and y equals negative 1 half x plus 3, that's coinciding. So if nothing's the same as intersecting? Yep. If everything's the same, it's coinciding. And if just the slope is the same, it's parallel. So let's do four. Divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, and I get y equals two x plus six. And then solve this one for y, subtract the four x, negative two y, equals negative 4x plus 8 and then divide by negative 2 divide by negative 2 divide by negative 2 and I get y hmm mm -hmm. so these are the two equations I'm comparing y equals 2x plus 6 and y equals 2x minus 4 good those are parallel the slopes are the same but the y-intercept is different which means they're parallel means that they are the same line. So the slopes and the y intercept would be the same. It ends up being the same equation. Wait, why would it be parallel? Because the slopes are the same, but the y intercept is different. Oh, okay. okay. This is the homework from yesterday. So this is practice B. I'm gonna zoom in on the answers. Okay, one should have been y minus seven equals zero or y equals seven. Yeah. Somebody started out. What? Yep. Could, yeah. But that's given to you. All you have to do is plug that information in, right? You don't have to actually do any math with the fraction. This is your m, this is your x1, and this is your y1. So all you're doing is plugging them in. Don't let a fraction scare you when all you're doing is plugging it in. Okay, three is y equals seven x. Four is y equals negative one half x minus one. 
Five said graph the line. So five should look like this. Yeah, hang on. Let me go through all the answers first. Six said graph the line. Looks like this. And then seven, eight, and nine were coinciding, parallel, or intersecting. And 10, don't freak out about, okay? It's 37, 34 days. Okay, so five, you have two options. It's in point slope. So if you wanted to pull the information out of it, this is your point. I mean, this is your slope. So M is three-fourths. And then the point, you just have to remember to change the sign. So the point would be negative one. And then the opposite of this one, which is negative three. That's one option. So I would plot that negative one, negative three is here. And then my slope is three over four. So I go up one, two, three, and right. One, two, three, four, and plot my point and connect them. So that's one option. The other option is to take this equation and put it into slope intercept format. So I would get y plus three equals three fourths x plus three fourths, because that's what three fourths times one is. And then you'd subtract the 3, and I'd get y equals 3 fourths x. Change them so they're the same denominator, which would be 12 fourths. And I'd get negative 9 fourths, which is negative 2 and 1 fourth. That's why you have two options here. Pick whichever one you're the most comfortable with. You just have to know how to do one or the other. Hang on, let me finish it. So negative 2 and 1 fourth is here. That's my B. And my slope is 3 fourths. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. And I end up with the same line. Why do you have to change Okay. So you have two options. One is to take the information out of point slope, which is what I did first. You just have to remember to change your signs. I don't want you guys to mess that up. Somebody's going to just pull those points out and not change the sign, and it's going to be wrong. You have to remember to change your sign on the point. That's your first option. The second option is solve it for y. So distribute the 3 fourths and then subtract the 3. I don't care which of those options you do as long as you do it correctly. So 4 says the line with x intercept negative 2 and y intercept negative 1. So we talked about how the x-intercept is the same thing as saying y is 0, right? So this would be negative 2, 0. And the y-intercept is the same thing as saying the x is 0, so this would be 0, negative 1. And then you've got two points, which means you can find your slope doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or negative 1 minus 0 over 0 minus a negative 2 becomes positive 2, negative 1 halves. That's your slope. And then you already have your B. Your B is your y-intercept, which is negative 1. So I get y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. What would number 6 then? What horizontal is a what kind of slope? Um, y? Oh, it's, it's a y line, but it's yeah. a what kind of slope? Uh, slope would be 0, right? Horizontal oh, yeah. slope is zero. So you could either memorize that it's a y equals equation, mm -hmm. or you can take this and this point and plug it into point slope. Oh. So y minus seven would equal zero times x minus three, and it simplifies out, right? Because this would be zero, and I'd get y equals seven. Okay. Easier than that is to memorize that a horizontal is a y equals and vertical is an x equals, and then you grab the y from the y equals, and you would have grabbed the x for a vertical line. What would the x be? So if this was the vertical line through 3, 7, my answer would be x equals 3. Okay. Because it's horizontal, it's y equals 7. Okay. So vertical, you grab the x. Horizontal, you grab the y. Okay. All right, the line through negative 1 half and negative 7 halves and 2, 4 in slope intercept form. So I have to find the slope. This is my x1. This is my y1. This is my x2. This is my y2. So 14 minus a negative 7 halves becomes plus 7 halves over x2, which is 2, minus a negative 1 half becomes plus 1 half. Wait, why would it be negative 14? 
it's y2 minus y1. We don't change the sign on it. We're only changing the sign on the second one because it's minus a negative. So then it becomes positive. So now I need to change them so they have the same denominator, right? So 14 over 1 becomes what over 2? I have to change it so it has the same denominator. 28 over 2. And 2 over 1 becomes what over 2? 4 over 2. Now I'm doing 28 plus 7 over 2. You with me? Yeah, 35 over 2. And then 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2, 5 over 2. And a fraction divided by a fraction, I would do keep, change, flip. Yep. So divided by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. These cancel. 5 goes into 35 seven times, and that's my slope. So then I now have slope and two points. My advice is pick point slope and pick the non-fractions. Avoid them as much as you can. So if my m is 7 and I grab this point and I plug it into point slope, I would get y. Say again. My, but no, it's my slope. Right? That's what we just found. So then I get y minus y1, which is 14, equals m, which is x, x minus x1, which is 2. And then it's a slope-intercept form, so I've got to solve this for y. Negative 14 and positive 14 cancel out. And there's my equation. Federico. Nope. So this is the information that you need to know from your chapters, okay? Again, this note is on the module all the way at the bottom. So from 3-1, you basically have to know all of those definitions. Not like write out the definition for parallel lines, but you should be able to identify parallel lines from a diagram or perpendicular skew lines, parallel planes, corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, vertical angles, and linear pair. So all of that is stuff, and this stuff does not go away, so I can't stress how important it is to really grasp these concepts. You have to know all of those, okay? So parallel lines are coplanar. It's on the module, and don't, it's all the way at the bottom. No, I just said it's not going to ask you for the definitions, it, but you do have to know those things to identify them from a picture, basically. And then perpendicular lines obviously form right angles. Skew lines are not coplanar. And don't intersect. So all of these, those were on your quiz as well, which I have to give back to you. Right. So they can't lie on the same. So if you're looking at a box, they can't lie on the same side of the box. Right? But they can't intersect. And then parallel planes are planes that don't intersect. You can't have coplanar and non-coplanar planes because if they're coplanar planes, they're the same thing. So these would be non-coplanar that don't intersect. So these are like the roof and the ceiling. Or the front wall and the back wall. Or the top of the box and the bottom of the box. Okay, those would be... Those would be um, parallel planes. Okay, corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior. So if I had two lines, they don't even have to be parallel. And a transversal. And I numbered these one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. You would want to be able to identify each of those special kind of angles. Again, you won't be writing out definitions, but you do need to be able to identify each of them. So corresponding could be one and three. Two and four, five and seven, and six and eight. Alternate interior in between the two lines, but on opposite sides of the equal sign. Angle so alternate, two say again. Angle two and angle Good. Seven. Angle two and angle seven. And there's one more pair. Six and three. Six and three. Alternate exterior outside the two lines. Outside though, they gotta be all the way. One and eight, good. One and eight and four and five. Those are alternate in exterior. And then the last ones for this section are alternate, or sorry, same side interior. Nope. Two and six would be a linear pair, right? So it's six and seven and two and three. So all we're doing right now is identifying what they are. We haven't set up their relationship yet, okay? Because these are not parallel lines. Vertical angles we know are congruent. So like angle one and angle six are vertical angles. Those would be congruent. Angle two and angle five, angle three and angle eight, and angle four and angle seven. The lines don't have to be parallel for those to be congruent. And then linear pair are two angles that form a line. So one and two, there's a lot of these. Our linear pair, because it could be one and two, two and six, six and five, five and one. All of those would be linear pairs, okay? So two and six, six and five, one and five. Those are all linear pairs. And what do we know about all linear pairs? They're supplementary. On the other transversal, I could say three and four are linear pair, four and eight, eight and seven, and seven and three. And again, each pair of those would be supplementary or sum to 180. These are vertical. Okay, three, two, angles formed by parallel lines. So if they all start exactly the same way, which is that if the lines are parallel, or if two lines, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, they all start the same way. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles, angles postulate tells you what? What's true about corresponding angles if the lines are parallel? Good. Corresponding angles are congruent. How about alternate interior? Congruent or supplementary? Okay. Nope. Oh. Congruent. Congruent. No, now you're thinking the other way around. The only one of the four special angles that are supplementary is which one? Same side. Same side interior. The rest of them are all congruent. Really? The only two sides? Yep. Yes. Okay. So these are the ones where you were given a diagram 
and you were given this angle and this angle and you would have had to add them up and set them equal to 180. Or that angle and that angle and you would set them equal to each other. So all of these started with parallel lines. All right, so from 3, 3, these were all the theorems and postulates that were the converse of the ones that were in 3, 2. So it's important to remember that the word converse must be included as part of your explanation if you're using these. So the first one is converse of the corresponding angles, and then the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem, and the converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem, converse of same side interior angles. So for each of these, you're establishing something about the angles first, and then you're stating that the lines are parallel. So all of these end with then the lines are parallel. And so the converse of the corresponding angle, angles postulate says that the corresponding angles are congruent. The converse of the alternate interior angle says that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this is true, or if the alternate, if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And then the last one, which is same side interior, is the only one that is not congruent and this one is if the same side interior angles are supplementary then the lines are parallel so if you're trying to prove the lines are parallel then you're using the converse if you have the information that the lines are parallel so you're stating something about the relationship of those angles. That's the initial theorems or postulate. Three, four was your perpendicular section. So all the information about perpendicular lines, the perpendicular bisector, which is a line that is perpendicular, which is the upside down T, to a segment. at its midpoint. So that would look something like this. So I've got a segment and then a line. It would be perpendicular to that line or that's that segment at its midpoint. So in this case, the purple line is the perpendicular bisector to this red segment. The second thing says the distance from a point to a line. So the shortest distance or true distance from a point to a line is the perpendicular segment connecting that point to that line. The next one says if two intersecting lines form a linear pair of congruent angles. So if we think about what this looks like, two intersecting lines that have a linear pair. So the linear pair would be like angle one and angle two here are a linear pair. And if those two are also congruent, then that means linear pair is 180. Congruent means they're equal. So if you take the 180 divided by two, that means that these lines are perpendicular. because those angles would have to be 90 degrees. The perpendicular transversal theorem says that if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other one. A 
And what this basically means that if I had two, again, you have to have two parallel lines. So if I had one line, two lines, these are parallel, so they have a little arrow on them. And then I've got a line that is perpendicular to one of the lines. So let's say that this is J, this is K, this is L. If J is perpendicular to K, then J is also perpendicular to L. And that's because K and L are, perpendicular, are, are parallel. And the last one says, if two coplanar lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel. So again, this time I have two lines. I don't know that they're parallel yet. But if we can say that these are each perpendicular to that red line, then I would know that they are both parallel to each other. All right, 3, 5 is next. So 3, 5, slopes of lines. So the slope, which is called rise over run, is also shown by the symbol M. And the equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you're going to get given points here, and it will ask you to find the slope. So if I said that it passed through point 1, 2, and 4, 5, then I would do x2, y, sorry, x1, y1, and x2, y2. And I would do 5 minus 2 over 4 minus 1, which is 3 over 3 which reduces to one, and that would be the slope. There's four types of slope. So there's positive slope. There's negative slope. There's zero. And there's undefined or no slope. So positive slope would be a line that increases as you're moving from right to left. Negative slope would decrease as you move to right from right to left. Zero slope is a horizontal line. And undefined slope is a vertical line. So positive slope rises as you move to the right. Negative slope falls as you move to the right. Zero is horizontal. And undefined is vertical. Both the positive and the negative are going to be in y equals mx plus b format. The zero is a y equals a number without an x. And the undefined is an x equals a number without a y. The parallel lines theorem says that two lines that are parallel have the same slope. And the perpendicular lines theorem says that two lines that are perpendicular have slopes that are the opposite reciprocals of each other. So if I had the slope of one line and it was two-thirds, the slope of a line that's perpendicular to it would be a negative three-halves. So the sign has to change and the number has to flip. All right, and then three-six is lines in the coordinate plane. So for here, you needed to know a bunch of the formulas. For slope-intercept format, this would be y equals mx plus b, where the m is the slope. And the B is the y-intercept. Point slope format is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, the m is the slope. And this time, your point is the x1, y1. Vertical lines have equations. That would be x equals a number. 
Horizontal lines are y equals a number. Parallel lines will have the same slope, but different y-intercept. Coinciding lines are going to have the same slope and y-intercept. So these end up being the same line. And then if they are neither of the e's, then they are intersecting. So if the slope is different, they're going to be intersecting lines. All right, so that's it for all the material that's going to get covered on your test. Remember that there's a Quizlet that is at the end of the module in your on your Canvas page. There is a review assignment that's been assigned to you um, that's due at the end of class on Wednesday. Please make sure you get started on that, and then the answers will get posted after class. And there's also a review at the back of the chapter in your book that has all the answers on it. So take advantage of all these things so that you are prepared for your test. Good luck.